going to start in Egypt, where the Jews are slaves. God's heard their cry. He sends Moses. And uh, they uh, are freed from slavery. God takes them the long way because he knows the people are weary, tired. They complain. They murmur. He got to send a few snakes. They won't quail. <laughs> you know, a few people die of that too. <coughs> and, uh, he's always doing something. Amen. Mm, amen. But finally, they cross the river. They get free from Egypt. They uh, fight the enemy. They get right beside the river. This is history now. Right before 1 Samuel 8 1 is where we're going to start. But this, uh, this is just history right now. They fix it across the promised land. Moses and the people, right? Right. Moses sent 12 spies. 10 come back, said, all 12 come back, say it's the land of milk and honey. Don't you like that? Yep. Only problem is the people are giants. We like little grasshoppers. Ten of them said that. <laughs> so you know what they did? They, they went right beside the tent and they started crying. Huh. They cried. So you know what God's told them people? Told Moses to tell the people? What did he tell them? Plan A is over. Since you wouldn't believe me, after seeing all the miracles that I've done in the land of Egypt, while you was uh, walking with me, cross over the river. Mm -hmm. Since you don't believe I can take care of business, and I won't be with you, beside you, since you believe all this, plan A is off the table. Plan B has started. You say, what's plan B? You're going to wander in the desert for 40 years and everybody dies. Uh, we want plan A. We're going to fight the enemy. You know, Moses tells people, don't do it. Y'all going to get defeated. What happened? They didn't listen. They got defeated. They had to wander in the desert for 40 years because uh, the people had no faith. You notice we've been having faith a lot here lately. Mm -hmm. Amen. No faith. Joshua takes over because Moses is old. Uh, you know, God said, uh, I told you to talk to the rock. You hit the rock because you did that. You, you, you can look at the promised land, but you can't cross over. Besides people, when they bury you, they're going to make you an idol. So I'm just going to take you down. Mm. Don't worry, there's part B, uh, book of Revelation. You'll be back. Amen. We'll have a sequel. There you go. Amen. Amen. Moses, part two. Amen. Amen. I, I've already got a title. Hmm. Amen. What do we, we'll have whole franchise movies. Amen. Elijah, part two. I like it. I like it. I see you didn't like that at all. <laughs> yeah. So, the first plan in work. People's plan didn't work. God's plan, it worked. He let them by day, uh, cloud by day, fire by night. Mm. They knew exactly God's here with us. Just stay close. Amen. Their clothes mm. never got old. They got fed. They murmured a lot. That's why they all died. So Joshua takes group two, 40 years later, offers them the same deal. Y'all gonna believe this time? You know what they, you know, the people did. They smiled and said, "You know what? I, I believe we're gonna take Plan A. We're gonna cross over. We're gonna cross over." And they defeat the enemy. Then the devil shows up. He sends the heathens by. They come with molded bread, worn out clothes, and they say, uh, "Well." You make a peace treaty with us. Does anybody pray? No. Let's make peace. Mm -hmm. And so God sends them an angel and says, uh, the people, by the way, uh, they live close by, so they're going to be a thorn in your side forever. Mm. Now, when God says you're going to have a thorn in your side forever, he actually means it. Amen. Israel today, 
made up of Jews, and there are Arabs that live there, Muslims. On the Temple Mount, where the Jews had the temple, you have the Islamic shrine, mm -hmm. uh, amen, uh, right there built on top of it. What do they call that thing? Somebody's got to look it up. It's a uh, big old shrine made out of gold. You know, it looks look like gold on the outside. Big old temple. Uh-huh. Aren't still there? Every year, them Jews go up there and try to rebuild it. Every year, them Muslims say, go home. Rock of the Dome, that's what it is. The Dome. I believe that's what it's called. First Samuel 8, 1. Now, God had chosen Samuel to take over as a prophet because the old man, the one that raised him, him, when he wouldn't discipline his children. So the old man dies. His children die. Uh, all at the same time, so Samuel takes over as a prophet. He's now become an old man. And what does the old man do? Does he pray and ask God, should I make my boys judges? Mm -hmm. They're my boys. I'm trusting them boys all my life. <laughs> you know, go get daddy's slippers. Can you give me some ice cream, son? Amen. amen. It's easy amen. to trust your family, especially your boys. Amen. All right. And uh, it gives them their names. I'm not going to talk about that. But uh, they were judges, and his sons walked not in the way, but turned aside after lucre and took bribes and perverted judgment. Old preacher made them two boys, but they did not like daddy. I mean, they just ain't like daddy. Hmm. There used to be this Mexican uh, uh, boxer. He won three championships, had three belts at the same time. Wow. Chavez. His boy, he trained his boy to become a fighter. His boy nowhere came near what the old man was like. Because <laughs> the old man was just, I mean, he just got in your face, and, I mean, just knocked you down. Three different weight divisions, three different titles. And nobody trusts these two crooked boys. Everybody's been to court. Got a raw deal. Didn't have enough money to get out. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Verse 4, and all the elders gathered together. They, they talked to Samuel. He said, you old man, verse 5, and you boys, they ain't like you. They take bribes. They don't make right decisions. And uh, we want a king. Thing displeased Samuel said, Give us a king to judge us, and Samuel prayed to the Lord. Look at verse number seven. And the Lord said to Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee. Preacher, it's not you they're rejecting. They're rejecting who? Me. Me. God said it's me. You're there rejecting me. Hmm. My people are rejecting me. Hmm. God has a plan there. Right. I'm going to provide a leader. It ain't the two boys, by the way. Plan A was, I'm going to get you another guy, just like Samuel. He's going to lead y'all. But you don't want to be plan A. Because plan A is God, amen, is in charge of the country. Right. We have no king. We got a preacher, though. <laughs> amen. Amen. Yeah, when he gets a hold of God, you better watch out. Watch out. Right. Right. You better yeah, watch out when the old man gets a hold of God. Because when the old man gets a hold of God, amen, a lightning, egg, a lightning bolt may just wind up... Uh, on, uh, on the on side of the top of your head. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Israel was supposed to be like no other nation. You know what the people said? 
They ain't got no faith. All they see is two corrupt boys. Do they cry out to Moses? Give us a man like Moses. Give us a man like Joshua. Give us another Samuel. God, give us a man that will lead us spiritually, morally, judge us right. Would you do that, Lord? Did they pray that? No. We want king. We want king. So, he said, you know, according to all thy words which I have done since the day that I brought thee out of Egypt in this day where thou hast forsaken me, serve other gods, and they also will be unto thee. He said, Samuel, the people have been serving other gods. Even when they come to church. Sink in a little bit. Right? Now, therefore, hearken to the voice in what they want. He said, But warn. So, in verse 10, Samuel tells them, tells the people, Okay, you guys want to camp? Let me tell you what's going to happen. You're going to take your sons, verse 11. He's going to get them, put them in front of his chariots, horsemen. They're going to run. He's going to take captains and thousands and fifty thousand. They ain't going to put them all. He's going to take part of your harvest. He's going to take your daughters to cook, become cooks and maids, bakers. He's going to take part of your fields. He's going to take part of your vineyards and olive gardens, verse 14. He's going to take a tenth of the seed of your vineyards. He's going to give it to his officers. Are you really sure this is what you want? Taxes. Mm. <coughs> you tied to God. You gave for the temple to help restore the temple. You gave a portion to the priest. They get taken care of. That was it. Mm. But you don't want that. You want to pay more. You want a king. Just like everybody else. We won't be just like Cuba. We won't be just like, I can't remember the name of the country right now, Venezuela. People lined up, inflation, $1,000 won't buy you a loaf of bread. Mm. There ain't nothing to buy if you have the $1,000. Women are crossing over the border to sell their hair <laughs> just to make money. You say, why? Socialism became communism. And we want more men servants and maid servants. He's going to take the best of your men, the best of your beast, animals, your asses, put them to work. He's going to take a tenth of your sheep. And you shall cry out the day because of your king shall have chosen you. The Lord will not hear you in that day. He said, you wanted it bad enough? Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you the man that you want. You want a king? You want a king? You want a king? I'm going to give you one. You want higher taxes? You want to say goodbye to your son as he becomes a soldier, has to fight a fight? You want to say goodbye to your daughter? Because she's going to be at the palace now? Because she can cook, really cook good? No problem. Well, what, what do you mean? I, I own six acres of land. What do you mean you're going to take one away from me? Uh, I mean, I've got, I got ten, man. Well, why are you taking one from me? Well, uh, this is for the king. He's going to get a tenth. A tenth is what he said. A tenth of the seeds. He's going to get it. Why? Y'all want the king. Verse 19. Does the old man, after telling them what's going to happen, all the bad things that are going to happen, if they continue on wanting this prayer answered, wanting to change the country, wanting a new leader, we don't want a man that 
loves God. A man that wants to do right by his country. We want a king to protect us, take care of us. So they, they don't really think God can do it. Hmm. A whole bunch of people think God can't do it. A whole bunch of Christians can't do it. That's where they're wrong. Verse 19, nevertheless they refuse the voice of Samuel. Not we want a, we want people we can trust. Oh, you mean the king's gonna pick just men to become judges? Come on now. There's no tans all over the country. You know how they collect their money? They got a cop sitting up there with a radar gun, and if you drive by, he gonna pull you over and give you. <coughs> We're going too fast. You know what they call that? Taxes. <coughs> we call it tax. We got to call it fine. Mm -hmm. My speech uncle trap. used to live in a town near Corpus. Mm -hmm. They had that, that little speed trap. He said, well, we don't have enough money for you people to be poor. They're a bunch of farmers. So, to, you know, make sure everything goes okay. We got to have a couple speed traps. You don't buy a speed trap out there, do you? <laughs> Check your car, make sure your, your inspection sticker's okay. Right. Um, Check you out. Verse 22, and the Lord said to Samuel, hearken their voice, make them a king. Here's a list of the kings that they chose. The people's choice, Saul. He went mad. He had a man to bear uh, men in the field. He prophesied. I mean, God supplied with everything he needed. He didn't have enough faith <coughs> the old man, you know, he's old. And there's a battle coming. And so he decides to make a sacrifice on his own. Mm. I've seen the old man do it a thousand times. Yeah, but God didn't call you to preach. It's like God didn't call me to be a missionary. You know why? Because I'm a sick old man. My medicine they probably don't have in Spain or in Mexico or wherever, and I can't afford it if they did. So I doubt very seriously if God's ever going to call me to become a missionary. Hmm. Hey, you never know. He could heal you. I doubt it. I don't believe I, I can turn 20 by tomorrow. Amen? <laughs> I just don't see that happening to me. Do you see that in your life? <laughs> God turned the clock back? Nope. 40 years? Nope. So they get the people's choice. He's mad. Gone cuckoo. Full of the devil. Seeks advice from the wish before he's fixing to commit his last battle. Commits suicide. Second King David, God's choice, a man after God's own heart. He's still a man. He comes to him and commits adultery, a murder. He chooses his boy, as God told him, you're always going to have part of your family. Uh, the country's going to be run by David's seed. So you one of your children, your grandchildren, great grandchildren, great 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 grandchildren are going to the country. Solomon gets old. He runs the country very, very well. People love God. Until he gets old. Now he don't want to die. You know what old people don't want to do? They don't want to die. Especially if they got money. Now they ain't got no money. I'm ready to die. I'm gonna die now. They got money, I don't want to die. I got a beautiful wife. Have you seen Trump's wife? I don't think he wants to die. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Amen. He got money. I don't think he wants to die. Right. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Solomon's got everything, and now the old man, all them old women that he's been around, all them wives and concubines and all the others, have convinced him if you'll get me pregnant and uh, we'll just cast the baby in the fires of that idol, heat him up real good, burn up our babies, burn up your children. Hmm. You'll live longer. So because of Solomon's sin, the country's going to split. Pay attention now. Come on. There's going to be two countries. One is Judah and Benjamin. The other one is Israel and the ten northern tribes. Country splits. Uh, 
uh, Israel, you, know, you have uh, Rehoboam, he was bad. Uh, this is on uh, David's side. You got another king, he was bad. You have a good king, Asia. Joshua, good. And bad, 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 good, 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 bad, good, bad, repentant, bad, good, bad, mm. bad, and bad. They're taken off to Babylon they captivity for 70 <laughs> years, and then they get to return. That's the good side. Now, the kings on the other side, they had uh, Israel. They had 19 kings. They were all bad. Hmm. They got taken away before Israel did. I mean, before Judah, mm -hmm. David's side. So the 10 tribes, they all have bad kings. They all go first. We never hear about them again. Right. And you got the two left. People start going back to Israel, trying to rebuild it. Romans show up. They crucify the Lord. The people scatter. There's no more Israel at one time. Mark Twain, 1867. He went over to the Promised Land, the Holy Land, 1867. And the land was called Palestine. He said, this is swamp land, man. Wasn't this the land, the promised land, the land of milk and honey? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, somebody let the place go. Right. I mean, somebody wasn't taking care of the place. Hmm. Ain't no Jews around. Now then, Jews started coming back uh, between World War One, World War Twenty Two. Israel becomes a nation after World War II, 1948. President Truman recognizes it. They start rebuilding it into the land of milk and honey. Mm -hmm. And you know what the Arabs said? We want it back. We see what you've done with the place. It sure <laughs> does look good now. Man! Y'all did a great job. This place is beautiful. Now, them, them, them uh, Muslims were already there. They, that's where that rock dome came in there. World War II. In World War I, World War II. They say World War II, 11 million people died in concentration camp. 5 million Jews, 6 million others. Others were gypsies, witches, Ah, uh, Christians, uh, all the others. Some people say, well, that, that's just way too many. Okay, make it two million. Uh, well, does that make you feel better? Mm. <laughs> Still a lot of people. Yeah. And then Jews started coming back all over the world to get Israel back. June 1967, I told you it was going to be a little history. There you go, come on. Hey, Israel's neighbors got a little jealous. They're all Arabs. Egyptians. They say, you know what? They ain't that many Jews. Half of them don't even know them. They had to go back to, they had to start a Jewish school to teach the people how to speak Jewish. Mm. How, to, how to speak Yiddish or whatever it is, whatever they call them. Yeah. Whatever the language is. They had learned all that all over again because they had couldn't talk anything. One, one could talk Russian, one could talk, you know, German, one could talk, hey, hey, amen. They all had foreign languages. <laughs> hmm. So they were sending their kids into you know, the school. In June 1967, you have the Six Day War. Israel, Arab nation, Egypt, Syria, Jordan. April. There's an Arab battle with the Soviet, the Soviet Union provided Egypt with intelligence. Israel was moving troops north. And the problem is, it's the wrong information. Hmm. It's like listening to Jehovah Witness or a Mormon or a charismatic. Hmm. I mean, 
I, I got a former church member right now, and she's into Mormonism, and she doesn't even believe it. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. Well, preacher, you know, in America, there was only two tribes that came, I said, and I said, I, said, I know, there was a white one and a black one, right? right? And the white one get to go to heaven, and the black ones had no soul, according, and that's Mormonism, by the way. Hmm. So the, the, black, and then the Mormons uh, decided that uh, after the blacks started making money, uh, we're going to go ahead and let them in. <laughs> they, have, they actually do have a soul. <laughs> so let's go ahead and let me in. Crazy. Okay. <laughs> hmm? Misinformation. You yeah. say, who sent that misinformation? God did. Took them six days. They went in there. They caught the Egyptians by surprise. 18 different eight feet, uh, airfields eliminated. 90% of Egypt's air force sat on the ground. Israel expanded the range of attack. <clears throat> uh, Jordan, Syria, Iraq. Mm -hmm. Six days later, they won. You say, what was that? Miracle from God. Amen. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. That's right. You say, how many years was that? A bunch. Right. Even through the concentration camps, the whole nine yard, God said to stay on my people. Amen. Jesus said, pray for Jerusalem. Yep. He still cares about his people. Amen. Amen. The United Nations stopped a ceasefire, and unlike the U.S. of A., that gives everything back. Hmm. Like we gave Japan everything back. Yeah. We didn't make them pay tribute for taxes. Same thing with Germany. Matter of fact, we had troops over there until Trump said, you know what? Y'all people pay for your own troops, all right? <laughs> all right. Hey, man, you got to kick in. We're tired. I'm sending my boys home. But Israel, <laughs> to the victor becomes the spoils. <laughs> because that's the way it's always been in war. Whoever wins gets it all. Yeah. Whoever wins gets to write the history. It's right. there, that's right. You know why you can read your Bible and you know it's from God? Because it shows every flaw of every man that's mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. And let me say this. Every man of God, every child of God, every man, every Christian has some flaws in their life. Thank you, God. Right. Amen. Yes, you Amen. 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 That's right. I guess the Lord was still on them Jews' side. And now that now, President so B. Biden says he won. Trump says, well, I'm going to fight it in the courts. Big shot there. You say, what's going to happen? Money. I, I'm pretty pretty sure somebody's going to win. Yeah. You say, what's going to happen? Somebody's going to be mad. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh, yeah. Half the country's going to be mad. Oh, yeah, most definitely. I mean, there's only a couple million between each other. Yeah. Regardless, we were once a nation under God. There was no such thing as abortion. Nope. There was no such thing as uh, sodomites. Mm -hmm. Oregon became the first uh, country, I mean, first state, state legalized small quantities heroin, mm -hmm. cocaine, methamphetamine. So they don't want the junkie to go to jail, just the pusher, you know, just to get the sun. They get prison, but if you're just hooked, you know, basically Oregon just put a big sign, every junkie is welcome to come to Oregon. <laughs> come on by, we'll fix you up. Come on, it makes up at home. Come on by to Oregon. We got a big sign, heroin on sale right there, half price. Amen. Yep. Marijuana got legalized, I don't know how many more states. Hmm, I think all of them. 
But marijuana stock is down. You know why? The, the feds actually want that marijuana to be clean. No pesticides. No chemicals. Organic. Got the organic. Yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm a libertarian person myself. I don't care. I make a, I make a deal straight with the farmers over there in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Columbia, <laughs> amen. We'll process the cocaine here, amen. Oh, we'll yeah. make sure it's good, amen. <laughs> Anybody wants it, they die. Now, you got to say a lot. You got to say a thing. You overdose, that's it, you're dead. <laughs> we ain't bringing you back. Right. Uh, you say, what happens? We'll have less people to take care of, amen. Amen. Yep. Thank you. God bless you. Have, I know you didn't like that idea one minute, amen. Well, there'd be a few more trapped out. Oh, yeah. In Oregon, there is. Right. Oregon's our experiment. Hmm. <laughs> so you want a king. So you want a leader. You stay in line for eight hours. You voted for your man. I don't care who you voted for. Should have had King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I would have punched that button. Amen. 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 You got a leader. You want a brand new president, do you? <laughs> Four years. God said, no problem, buddy. I'm going to give you. You know what you're going to say at the end, four years? God, give us another one because that one we didn't like at all. Exactly. Right. Right. And I don't care who wins. Thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Israel didn't have to go through all that. They just would have said, well, God, let's just keep it the same. Just give us another man to know we can get a hold of God. Amen. You know who was the best president that was a Christian? The best Christian that was a president. That's Bill, uh, uh, what was it, Jimmy Carter. He scolded the nation. Peanut that man. He scolded the nation on live television saying, America, y'all, y'all just, uh, what's that word, y'all overeat and you overdrink. And, uh, uh, it, was, it was a technical word. I can't remember what it was. Y'all spend too much money, overspend money that you, that you don't have and luxuries and things. You go out more, you're in debt. That's why the country's in such bad shape. Hmm. He scolded the whole country. Just like he was a preacher. Only problem is, the country is not Christian anymore. Hmm. And they voted him out. Right. He said, did you like his policy? I know I, I didn't like him his policies at all. Hey, amen. Amen. <laughs> I said he was the best Christian president. He didn't make a very good president, though. Yeah. Chasing in the Lord, and to be aware of his correction. For whom the Lord loved and corrected the Father, the Son, whom he delighted. Jesus went through slavery, lost battles, walked in the desert, warned the king, went back to slavery, got gas, concentration camps. You know what the Lord said? You're still my people. Now, how many of you? He said, uh, don't despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be 
career as correction. You read your Bible, there's plenty of chastisement and correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth his father as the son of me delighteth. Our presidents before, I'll start off with John, John F. Kennedy, assassinated. Lyndon B. Johnson. He was impeached. Gerald Ford, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, John Bush, Bill Clinton, another Bush, his boy, Barack Obama, Donald Trump, and I don't care who becomes president, but you're going to get the good, the bad, and the ugly. Right. This is like you had it before. Right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and the Republic. We are not a democracy. We don't go by people's choice. That's why you got two. Amen. Amen. You got the House, you got Congress, you got President, and then you got the Supreme Court. Right. And the Supreme Court says, I, I, I can't do that. It go all the Supreme Court. I don't care what law was passed. Hmm. If it gets up to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court says, uh-uh, I don't like it. We were built on a system that hopefully would not get tampered. But everybody's tampered with it now. Now it's all executive orders. Yeah. One thing done, another executive order. Mm. So you want a king! <laughs> One nation under God. It might have been at the beginning. It might have been a nation under one God. Right. I don't think America is a nation under one God. Mm. No more. Maybe. One time. When God's forsaken God. I mean, America's forsaken God. Mm -hmm. So God loves his children. Is he going to bring more blessings to us this year? More money? COVID gone? You think that's going to happen? Huh? <laughs> you think, you think that, hey, I, I mean, everything's just going to pick up. Pick up, 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 pick up. Or, my son despises not the chastening of the Lord, neither be aware of his correction, whom the Lord loveth, correcteth of the Father, the Son, whom men delighted. America may just get a little chastisement, a little correction. You say, by who? every nation that thinks they can take an old man down. You know what my advice is? Does God still love America? Well, it's on our money. Have you noticed they're taking away our money? And they make you want to pay with the debit card? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Because they don't want you seeing that part. Right. Let's get it out of the people's, America's lives. Amen. We're going to have sports, but they're going to kneel at the flag so that you can get mad and won't stand up for the flag. Mm. Amen. You're just going to change the channel. You're not going to stand for it no more. I'm standing. You gonna stand up for the Lord? I advise you to pray for our country, our churches, and our families. Because for the next four years, I have no idea what's gonna happen. Yeah. Oh, can you see by the dawn's early light? But so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming. <laughs> Whose bright stripes and bright stars through perilous fights or the rampart we watch were gallantly steaming. And the rocket's red glare and the bombs bursting in air gave proof to the night that our flag was yeah. still there. Mm -hmm. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave mm -hmm. or the land of the free? 
God told his son, Solomon, it's time to man up. That's it, time to go to war. You're going to be king. You better listen to God. He did it all the way to him. got him. Amen. some of us <coughs> amen amen you said do you really care about what's going to happen who's president oh, I don't there's another one I fear even worse yeah until a man I have no fear whatsoever <laughs> but that other one oh god yeah no man dies we have big big trouble mm -hmm. you know God's upset with us. Oh, yeah. I advise you to pray for whoever becomes president. Amen. That they do what God tells them to do, because God still rules the hearts of kings. That's right. <coughs> yep. I can prophesy right now what's going to happen. Lawyers, courts, you know what my advice is? You better forget about all that. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due, due time, and cast all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. You know what God does? He cares about you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my Lord. He cares so much that if you insist on plan, your plan, your way, he's going to say, okay, I'll give it to you. You ain't going to like it. We want it anyway. <laughs> and then when the trouble comes you better start casting your cares upon them. right Lord I can't carry this burden no, that's, I'm sorry you're going to take care of it because I can't take care of it yeah. he knows what's best for our country our churches our families so forget about it give it to God amen, amen. he'll help us in due time right Jesus did not die on the cross so that America could have a certain president so that America could bloom. He died on the cross, amen, that sinners might be saved. Amen, yeah. Get to go to heaven. He made a door. He hung on a cross between two thieves. He took a beating. Didn't yeah. even look like a man. Right. He didn't do that to put money in your pocket, to feed you. Mm -hmm. He did that to make a way for you to get to heaven. Amen. Yes. Thank you, my Lord. Have an abundant life. You keep all this worrying, all you're going to do is get an ulcer. Yep. Forget about it. Turn off the news. Leave it off. I'd leave it off early. Every time I hear about something, well, so and so, that click. HBO. 
ESPN, quickly. Quickly, get me there. Get me some place out. Game show, eh, man? <laughs> right? I'm sick of it. Yeah. I am sick of it. So you want a king? Mm-hmm. Sit in line, did you? Are you going to get it? <laughs> you going to get what you wanted. Half the country will. Right. Half the country will. They're like, half. They're going to be a little upset. They're trying again four more years. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? I can tell you this. God knows what he's doing. Amen. You know, I, 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 I make some stupid prayers once in a while. Right. So I, I don't want what I want. I want what you want. What you want. Yeah, it's true. Would you please do that? Yes. I won't be like that man that Church, hallelujah. Amen. Amen.